Good evening, everybody. Jazz Views with CJ Shearn here. And I just want to talk about, really briefly, a album, an album here, that my friend, um, he was visiting Japan, and he brought me back, he just randomly bought an album, which actually is... Uh, a classic of Japanese free jazz. Um, it's actually, it's not rare at all in terms of uh, Japan. If you look at uh, Discogs.com, you can find uh, listings for various pressings. But in terms of the American market, it hasn't been on CD in the U.S. and is very rare as far as America. And this album is. Kiasma by the Yosuke Yamashita Trio. And this album was recorded in 1975 at the Heidelberg, the Heidelberger Jazz Titch. And this is actually really cool because I first encountered Yosuke Yamashita's playing when I was 13 years old. Um, if some of you may remember the special Carnegie Hall Salutes the Jazz Masters, which was saluting at that time the 50th anniversary of Verve Records. And that was a major CD and VHS tape concert release that also was on Laserdisc, which are a format that VHS and Laserdisc are formats that some people today who weren't around back then wouldn't know about. <laughs> but um, anyway, so Mr. Yamashita was on the, a portion of the program and he played Bud Powell's Parisian Thrill Affair and at the time he was recording for I believe the France based Guitons label and uh, some of those records were, were picked up by Verve in the US for distribution for sure uh, many Johnny Griffin albums on guitarists were picked up by Verve in the U.S. as well as uh, Jackie McLean's recordings for Antilles and, and uh, vice versa. So I had become a little bit familiar with Mr. Yamashita's playing there and um, although he was playing a classic Bud Powell tune, he imbued it with his signature uh, Cecil Taylorisms. Um, and definitely is playing to me uh, everything I've heard, which is pretty limited in terms of what I've heard of his playing. Uh, just this album and uh, Parisian Thrill Fair, it it exhibited that that quality. And I just finished listening to uh, Kiasma for the first time. And and man, what what a blast! Um, the first track, Double Helix, is a duet between uh, Yamashita and the drummer Takeo Moriyama, and it's it's just it's fun, you know. It's it's great. Uh, Nita is a solo piano piece. Um, which at times Yamashita, who who grew up originally playing violin and switched to piano, and um, his first piano teacher uh, was very into swing piano, and one of the piano players that he had heard, excuse me, one of the piano players that he had heard originally that he liked very much was uh, the great Teddy Wilson, and then he was turned on the modern jazz by hearing Hampton Hawes. So uh, Nita is a piece that occasionally uh, in the improvisation he hints at 
some some bebop style lines but but again they morph into um the very percussive um scattering cecil taylor type lines and and the title track is just a complete freak out with uh Akira Sakata on, on alto saxophone, who also appears on Hachi, which is a Takeo Moriyama composition. And, you know, it's just great. Uh, intro Hachi is a drum solo by Moriyama. And uh, the kind of phrasing that, that he plays is uh, of course very very uh, post Elvin Jones, post Tony Williams, post Jack DeJanet kind of solo like um, the kind of phrasing that that Williams plays on uh, agitation on on uh, Miles's ESP um, that those are the kind of phrasing that that you will hear and. Uh, also, there's a lot of uh, melodic development going on in the solo as well, and um, this is this is really just a terrific album on a first listen. It's it's the kind of uh, cathartic free jazz that's uh, like uh, brain matter exploding all over the walls, and um, you know, for lovers of of things like Peter Bratzman, you know, this is this is perfect. And um, I'm looking forward to when I go to Japan next month, going to uh, Tower Records and and uh, looking at um, their massive jazz uh, section, which, of course, here in the U.S., record stores are pretty much, they don't exist anymore. And um, so it's going to be fun looking at, you know, reissues of American jazz that I've been looking for for a long time, but also... Uh, Japanese jazz, which uh, my friend told me that they have a complete section dedicated just to Japanese uh, musicians, which I think is very, very important and because um, the Japanese free jazz scene is very, very vibrant. Um, I'm going with another friend, actually, um, to Japan next month, and uh, one of the things we would like to try to do, of course, I don't know if it's a wheelchair accessible venue, but the Samurai Jazz Bar which um, I believe is in Roppongi. It's uh, the Pit Inn. Um, there is a free jazz jam session on Monday nights, and and that 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 just sounds incredible. So you know, Japanese free jazz is 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 a very vibrant scene. Um, I was talking to. The guitar player Brian Caston, um, and I'll be doing a podcast with him for the New York Jazz Workshop uh, next week. Uh, he's very interested in playing in Japan, and uh, I suggested some other musician friends that I know who have ties to the Japanese scene. And uh, Brian Caston's music, if you haven't checked him out, he's absolutely amazing. Uh, check out his new album, Not So Standard, with with uh, Miles Griffith. Uh, Steve Rust and Peter O'Brien, and also last year's double album, Roll the Dice on Life, which uh, is destined really to become a cult classic. But Yosuke Yamashita Trio, Kiasma, a really great album. If you can find it, pick it up. Uh, there are clips on YouTube of the album, but as, as usual, it's just better to pick up the physical CD uh, or the vinyl and uh, just enjoy it the way it was intended. So, thank you for watching this short um, video impression, I guess you could say, of the Yamashita, the Yosuke Yamashita Trio's Kiasma. Uh, peace, love, groove, and keep swinging, or I guess you could say peace, love, groove, and keep squonking. So, uh, thank you for watching this video, and I'll talk to you later.